Good evening and welcome to the latest edition of Rewind. It's Friday, February 4th. We want to get you caught up on the biggest stories of the day. Our top story is about a Metro Atlanta family demanding justice after their 12 year old child is killed during a police chase. Reporter Adam Murphy has more on the story. Boykins died after state troopers used a pit maneuver on the car he was in. Letton's parents are calling on the district attorney to prosecute the officers involved. They all gathered at the Paulding County Government Center today. CBS 46's Adam Murphy is live there tonight listening to both sides. Adam. Well, good evening. I will tell you the family blames police for what happened here, saying they used a dangerous pit maneuver, knowing that there were a, was a child inside the vehicle. Now, police, on the other hand, are saying that the neighbor who was driving lead in should not have been behind the wheel of the car because, turns out, he was charged with driving under the influence. Justice for lead in. Justice for lead in. Justice More than a dozen people stood outside the Paulding County Government Center Friday in the bitter cold, demanding that the district attorney prosecute the officers involved in a pit maneuver like this, which resulted in the death of 12 year old lead in Boykins. They have refused to give this family any information and to hold those folk accountable who are responsible for the death of this 12 year old child. Boykins was a passenger in a car driven by a neighbor, Charlie Wilson Moore, on September 10th when Moore was pulled over by the state patrol. Police said Moore refused to roll his window down and provide his driver's license. And you have to bear in mind, this is one o'clock in the morning. Uh, a very, uh, it's, it's dark, it's in the middle of the night. And so uh, they were having trouble seeing uh, who was in the vehicle. Obviously they knew there were other individuals in the vehicle, but at night it's hard to tell, you know, ages, uh, sexes, anything like that. Moments later, Moore called 911 after leaving the scene of the traffic stop. He felt that they were being aggressive, the state trooper was, and that he asked for a supervisor. The officers began pursuing Moore and then performed a pit maneuver much like this, causing Moore's vehicle to flip, killing young Leiden. Whenever children are in the vehicle, they are not supposed to perform a pit maneuver. Now back live outside the Paulding County Government Complex, I'll tell you police here went on to say that Moore was charged with 32 crimes, several of which were felonies to include DUI, driving on a suspended license and homicide by vehicle and murder in the commission of a felony. And they said if he had just stopped and taken police orders, none of this would have happened. Now, having said all of that, I asked police why they haven't released any of the body cam or dash cam footage so we can take a closer look at what really happened on September 10th. They said it's part of an ongoing investigation and that's not available to be released at this time. We're live in Paulding County tonight. Adam Murphy. CBS 46 News. And a little boy safe after being abducted from his home in West Georgia. Tonight, the mother of four year old Brayden Dobbs in custody. Her estranged husband shot during the kidnapping. CBS 46's Savannah Louie is live in Harrelson tonight. Harrelson County with the latest development. Savannah. Yeah, we're going to start with the good news here. Braden is safe. He is OK. We've actually seen several of his family members coming in and out of Harrelson County Sheriff's Office with the biggest smiles of relief on their faces as he's been reunited with them. Now, his mother uh, is also here at the Harrelson County Jail. She faces now some serious charges. Every resource we have, every utility we have, every cooperation we have with other agencies was going to be devoted to the safe return of the child. A tense search gripping a community ends in sudden relief. But I can only imagine the relief they feel of having their child back. Four-year-old Braden Lee Dobbs was reunited with family Friday afternoon after he was taken from his father's home in Harrelson County earlier that day. Police say Anitred Boyd Dobbs and another man came to the home of her estranged husband, Lee Dobbs, Friday morning. A struggle ensued outside. Lee was shot, though it's unclear who pulled the trigger. Family tells CBS 46 Lee was able to crawl back inside of his home where his other children called 911 and notified family. His 12-year-old son performed chest compressions until first responders arrived on scene. And I just want him to pull through, and we need Brian home for him to do that. Lee is in the hospital after a bullet hit his chest plate and nicked his lung. Meantime, Anitra Dobbs faces charges of aggravated assault and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Police say more charges could be on the way. We don't have any actual custody arrangements yet, court order documents, anything like that. All of that 
will trickle in. As it trickles in, charges may be updated. It's the latest in a long list of a dozen previous charges for Anna Tritt in Harrelson County, ranging from disorderly conduct, aggravated assault, and drug-related charges, along with other arrests in different Georgia municipalities. Now, earlier today, police told me that there could be up to three other people in that car with Anna Tritt and Braden earlier today. They haven't released any further information on those suspects, though, but stay with CBS 46. We'll continue to bring you all the latest updates for now. Reporting live from Harrelson County, Savannah Louis, CBS 46 News. Savannah, thanks. New details and a suspected peeping Tom in Midtown is now in custody. Police arrested 43 year old Anthony Burgess Thursday morning. We're told a woman saw him looking through her window and exposing himself in early January. Investigators say they do still think there's a second peeping Tom in the Midtown area and they're still working to identify him. A man accused of robbing at least two Atlanta businesses now under arrest tonight. David Miller facing multiple charges, including armed robbery and aggravated assault. Investigators linked him to robberies at Hodgepodge Coffee on Moreland Avenue and CBS on Highland Avenue. We're told Miller is a convicted felon and has been arrested 19 times. Investigators are looking to see if Miller is connected to any additional crimes. We'll let you know and keep you posted. New tonight and loved ones are demanding answers in a deadly hit and run crash. Family and friends of 22 year old Kenya Smith gathering at the scene of her death in DeKalb County just about an hour ago. Smith was hit by a car on Marbot Road near Stonebridge Creek Street on Monday and the driver never stopped. We talked with Smith's brother-in-law today. As I hope he turned himself in. I feel like he was very pathetic for what he did. He shouldn't have hit her. Like at the end of the day, I feel like he should have been, uh, he or she should have been a human about it and came back or at least helped her. What if she was still alive? What if that was your child? Police believe Smith was walking to work when she was hit. If you have any information about the crash, call DeKalb County Police. A crime alert tonight, a warning to drivers about protecting what's underneath your car. Catalytic converters have long been a target of criminals looking to cash in quickly. Police say it's not a crime that's going away and they're urging you to take precautions. CBS 46's Megan Packer in Duluth for us tonight, learning how you can deter the thieves. It can happen in a matter of minutes. Somebody gets underneath your car and saws off your catalytic converter. This is where it should be on this car. And there's one sure way to know if this happened to you. When I was reversing, my car's engine was so loud I couldn't hear myself think. And it's been one big headache ever since for Lara Morrow, now without a car. Someone stole the catalytic converter right out from under her 2009 Toyota Prius. These are actually the bolts off underneath my car. I found those in my parking spot. It happened outside of her Duluth apartment building. We're seeing a uh, influx of uh, stolen catalytic converters throughout our city and the Gwinnett as well. Duluth police had reports of nearly 100 catalytic converters stolen last year alone. They tend to go towards more hybrids or SUVs or trucks. Morrow's car is now at the repair shop as she waits for her insurance company to get involved. Right here would usually be where the uh, the cat is. This is not a new crime, but thieves are persisting, sawing off the part to sell for maybe a couple hundred bucks. It's going to still happen unless people start buying undercover shields for their cars. You can find the shields online designed to deter criminals. Some people etch VIN numbers on them to make them traceable. Fulton County Schools is spraying this message on their school bus catalytic converters. And in Colorado, AAA is putting identifying stickers on the part and says it's considering extending that program. I guess it's like I have to pick up the pieces for someone else who like gave me this problem. And that's frustrating because it's not like I did it to myself. It's like they were trying to make a quick buck. Some other tips from police. They say park in well lit, well populated areas. Don't leave your car alone for too long and park in a garage if you can. In Duluth, Megan Packer, CBS 46 News. A crime alert now and gold stolen from a northeast Georgia gold mine. The Lumpkin County Sheriff's Office releasing pictures of the man they're looking for. They we're told that he took large amounts of gold, cash and jewelry from the Chris and Gold Mine on Thursday. If you recognize him, call Lumpkin County authorities. A grandmother survives after this massive tree crushes her Atlanta home. Today, crews working to clear the debris on Eisenhower Road. The woman says she was inside with her two grandchildren. 
it was scary. We were sleeping and heard the noise and came and saw this all over the place. I'm grateful. That's God's grace. That's all I've been thanking the Lord for, His grace and mercy, because so much of tra tragedy is happening. We checked. No one was hurt. Still ahead, it's all three men convicted of killing Ahmaud Arbery will stand trial next week on federal hate crime charges. Travis McMichael withdrew his guilty plea this morning, hours after his father Gregory did the same. The father and son originally struck a plea deal with prosecutors, admitting they targeted Arbery because he was black. The agreement would have meant the McMichaels would get to serve much of their life sentences in federal prison instead of state prison. However, a federal judge rejected the deal. Arbery's father spoke outside court today. I just got one word to say. All we want is 100% justice to Arbery family. That's all we're looking for. Him. God be the glory. The McMichaels will join Roddy Bryan, who recorded Arbery's killing at trial on Monday. Prosecutors are not allowed to use the McMichaels' prior guilty pleas against them during the trial. New tonight, the CDC is now using wastewater to track the spread of COVID-19. The National Wastewater Surveillance System tests for a disease in 37 states. More than 500 sites will start submitting data to the CDC this week. Studies indicate that most people infected with COVID-19 shed its viral DNA through their feces. Analyzing that wastewater can help officials estimate how prevalent the virus is in certain communities. Because increases in wastewater generally occur before corresponding increases in clinical cases, Wastewater surveillance serves as an early warning system for the emergence of COVID-19 in a community. Doctors say wastewater testing does not depend on people having access to a COVID test or even health care in general. We're told more testing sites will be added in the coming weeks. New at 6, a man's life saved thanks in part to his Apple Watch. One of the safety features kicking in after he took a tumble and couldn't call for help. Tonight, CBS 46 anchor Tracy Hutchins takes a closer look at how that man's life was saved by first responders, Tracy. Yeah, Rick and Sean, after seeing this story, I immediately checked to make sure fall detection was on my watch and you might want to make sure it's there on your watch if you have a smart one as well. One of the leading causes of injuries here in the U.S. is falls. Fall detection is a feature that we hope you never need, but it's really nice to know it's there. A Clayton County man may be alive today because of that Apple Watch feature. If he would not have had that activation of the smartwatch, which notified 911, he probably would not have been found till that next morning. Morrow Fire Captain Jim Fleming tells me that man fell outside of his home on a freezing cold January morning. The fall was detected by his Apple Watch, which automatically called 911. Mm -hmm. Dispatcher Alicia Chavos took the call but could only hear the man breathing erratically. With only basic GPS coordinates from the watch, Chavos contacted Morrow police and fire crews. Fortunately, the smart watch gave us close enough coordinates along with uh, Clayton County 911 to be able to narrow down our search and find this person basically within about 12 minutes from the time of dispatch. The owner of this Apple Watch has taken a hard fall. If you have an Apple Watch, here's how you can make sure the fall detection feature is on. When the Apple Watch app, open the Apple Watch app on your phone. Scroll down and tap Emergency SOS, then turn on Fall Detection. If the watch senses you are mobile for one minute, it will start the call automatically. And it, it also sends a message with your locations to your emergency contacts. Yeah, so in so many ways, this wearable tech, it pays off. And I learned that that man was released from the hospital the following day. Again, remember what the firefighter said. If that watch wasn't on his wrist, he may have stayed out there to the next day in the freezing cold. I did reach out to Morrow police officers and Clayton County dispatchers. They weren't available for an interview, but they told me that saving that man's life was just part of their jobs. Now, Sean, now you know how to put that fall detection on your watch, right? I, as soon as this newscast is over, exactly. I'm going to do that great information. And new today, Kroger just opened a new customer fulfillment center in Forest Park. The addition will help launch Kroger's first grocery delivery service in Georgia. The company says the new service will combine robotics with affordable and fast delivery of grocery items. Kroger delivery will also mean new jobs for the metro as the company is looking to hire and train delivery associates. Calvin Smith Law, the injury lawyers. Black and Hispanic Americans continue to be underrepresented when it comes to jobs in science, technology, engineering, 
and math, and that's according to Pew Research Center. As we continue to celebrate Black History Month, CBS 46 anchor Karen Greer introduces us to a teenager who hopes to change the world by encouraging more minorities and women to get their STEM swag on. Meet 14-year-old Temple Lester. I am a cool science communicator, entrepreneur, public speaker, advocate. She's down by our studios to teach us about how she makes science and math cool. But as I do the demonstration, we can <laughs> chemistry class now. <laughs> this young powerhouse doesn't let algebra, chemistry, or biology slow her role. She says being a STEM geek can be cool. Oh my oh God. God. STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math, and STEM is a part of everything in our lives from when we're talking and how things are moving in our body to when I'm calculating something, when my parents are paying for gas, STEM is all around us. I created a movement called STEM Girls Swag, which is about encouraging girls, minorities to show that STEM is cool and you don't have to be half this nerdy kind of persona to be in STEM. You can be cool and- I Temple's like also a young entrepreneur creating this neat STEM swag box that she hopes teaches STEM education in a fun way. The STEM swag box is the coolest science kit ever. It's full of seven fun exploding experiments that go through different types of sciences from plant science to chemistry. Temple visits schools and nonprofits with her purple boxes all over the country. So what are we doing Temple today? Okay guys, so we have an experiment out of my box. With These experiments allow children to think and create. And when I first started the box in 2019, I launched it and I also launched a GoFundMe to raise over $5,000 to donate it to kids in my community who may not have access to science in their own homes. And my favorite thing in the world in this kit is the plant seed ball, which is where you can make a plant out of paper and seeds. And another experiment in the box is to make the plant seed ball on your own. Um, there's different things like self-inflating balloon and magnetic slime. And everybody loves magnetic slime because who doesn't love slime? So it just kind of amps it up a little bit, makes it a little bit more scientific. What's next? Well, you can see Temple on Nickelodeon, where she will be featured as one of the Time Magazine's Kids of the Year. When I grow up, I would love to continue what I'm doing, but I would also love to be an astrophysicist, which is a astronaut kind of, but from here, and we explore Earth and different planets and figure stuff out from Earth. And it's kind of like understanding the universe and our place in it. Karen Greer, CBS 46 News. Thanks for watching CBS 46 News. Watch us live wherever you are, our mobile and our streaming news app. You can also watch us on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV.